My name is Caleb Dunn, and today we're going to talk about the different types of ways that pathogens can evade the responses from the immune system. So in general, there's four ways the pathogen can evade the immune system response, with these ways being antigenic variation, latency, or the disease not yet showing symptoms of the disease, avoidance of killing and immunosuppression, which will reduce the activation of the immune system. So we'll start by talking about antigenic variation in pathogenic cells. So in order to avoid the immune system, the first thing that certain pathogens can do is they can alter their surface antigens. Now this is important for pathogenic microbes that are being cleared by the immune system from infection. And the mechanism for variation can be fixed, it can be random, or it can be gene encoded. So let's say the pathogens in this case are like little criminals and the antibodies are like police officers that are hunting for these pathogens. In other words, what's meant by antigenic variation is the pathogen is in a sense changing its clothes in order to remain undetected by the antibodies. And one example of this is from the bacterium Streptococcus pneumonia. And there's 84 different types of this bacterium that's known and the structural differences in a capsular polysaccharide on the surface of the bacterium will translate into a different type of antigen. So in other words, the immune system is dealing with each type as if it's encountering a new pathogen for the first time. So let's say that you've been infected by a Streptococcus pneumonia bacterium, which is pictured over here, and your immune system will respond to it. So your immune system deploys antibodies that are going to clear this infection up. So now you've been infected with a second type of streptococcus pneumonia, but the immune system has only responded to this first type. So now it has to respond to this again, even though it's still streptococcus pneumonia, it's a different type. So now it has to have a new response by the immune system, which is going to clear this infection. And this is going to keep going on and on and on, so even though that it's still streptococcus pneumonia every single time, the different types are going to cause the immune system to respond in new ways every time. And the second way antigenic variation can happen is antigenic drift and antigenic shift, or the random part. Now, an example of this can be in the influenza virus. And what I mean by antigenic drift is it's going to result from point mutations while antigenic shift will result from a reassortment of RNA genome to generate a new antigenic type. So an example of this is, let's say you have influenza inside of your body and the immune system has these neutralizing antibodies and they're going to prevent this influenza virus from binding to the cell. But now you have a mutation of the influenza virus. So now these uh, neutralizing antibodies aren't going to be able to bind to this influenza virus. And now it's free to bind to the cell. And now an antigenic shift is going to occur when RNA segments are going to be exchanged between these viral strains in a secondary host. So now that it's a new antigenic type, there's going to be no cross-protective immunity and these antibodies won't be able to bind to this particular form of influenza because it's a new type of influenza. And the third type of antigenic variation is gene-encoded antigenic variation. An example of this is trypanosomes, and the main surface antigen on this is variant-specific glycoprotein, or VSG. And this genome contains more than a thousand VSG genes and there are many inactive trypanosome VSG genes but there's only one site for expression which is colored in. So let's say these inactive genes they're going to start copying into the expression site by gene conversion and there's going to be there could be more than one round there could be many rounds of gene conversion and this will allow this trypanosome to vary the VSG gene that's going to be expressed in this case. 
So the second form or way that the pathogen the pathogen can avoid the immune system response is by latency. So there's some viruses that can stop replication until immunity stops. And without replication, there's not going to be any viral peptides that are going to be produced, so the immune system isn't going to be stimulated. And an example of this would be herpes simplex or herpes zoster virus. So in herpes simplex... So in herpes zoster virus, uh, let's say you get chicken pox and it starts mutating, it starts replicating, and these antibodies will be deployed to stop the infection. So chicken pox will be gone and the cells will undergo through a latent period, but they may reappear later as shingles. So they may reappear, they may start replicating again once the immune system stops being stimulated. So the third way that pathogens can avoid the immune system response is by avoidance of killing. And there are certain pathogens that can induce a strong immune response, but they have different strategies to escape being killed. And the infection results from the ability to survive uh, immune response. So let's say the first example of this is in Mycobacterium tuberculosis. So the tuberculosis will come in and infect the cell. And this is going to survive by avoiding contents inside a lysosome. So the lysosome won't be able to bind to this tuberculosis uh, molecule. And the second way, or the second example that this occurs is by Listeria monocytogenes. And this particular bacterium will survive by avoiding contents of the lysosome through escape into the cell cytoplasm. So it's going to invade the cell and it's going to escape into the cytoplasm. And the third pathogen that utilizes this strategy is Toxoplasma gondii. And instead of escaping into the cytoplasm or just avoiding lysosomes altogether, it's actually going to create its own vacuole, which will isolate it from the rest of the cell. And one more way that the immune system, or that pathogens can avoid being destroyed by the immune system, and this is by immunosuppression. Or in other words, the pathogens can suppress immune responses. And a way that it can do this is that toxins can act as super antigens. So super antigens are proteins that will bind to an antigen receptor of large numbers of T cells, and this will result in T cell proliferation and apoptosis and depletion of T cells. So an example of this is toxic shock syndrome. And there was an epidemic of this in 1980. There was 940 cases with 40 deaths. And the toxin was produced by Staphylococcus aureus, which was bound to a T cell receptor and we continue to see these sporadically. So, to summarize this up, uh, the different ways that the pathogens can evade the immune system response, they can change types of disease, uh, they can randomly change, so they can mutate, or they can exchange RNA information and they can change the gene that is being expressed they can avoid different responses uh, from the cell or avoiding being killed by the cell and finally they can avoid replicating to avoid a immune system response and these are the different ways that pathogen can avoid being destroyed by 
an immune system response.